Should I buy a Tesla? I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. So I get a lot of heat for not owning a Tesla myself, despite having a Tesla channel. Uh, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I get it. So does it make sense for me? Uh, can I do it? Is it even possible? Well, the short answer is no. I mean, I can't afford it. But um, I can take a look at some of the considerations, and maybe you guys can help me make a final decision. So the first problem I have is it is probably too small. I mean, the Model X is great. It's a great size, but that's way out of my budget. But a Model Y with a seven-seat configuration? See, I have to have six seats because I have four boys. And they're not small children anymore. They're small-ish. So would it fit? I just don't know. I got in touch with the local showroom, and uh, they did not have one in stock or any information on how to find one. I asked if they could check around, and they said that sounded like a lot of work. Yeah, it does. So they don't have one. Uh, they don't know when they'll get one. They won't check if they're getting one, and they won't put me on a list to contact if they get one. So that's unfortunate. So I checked on Turo to see if I could find one in the closest major city, and there was not one. I checked the next closest city, and there was one, precisely one. If I wished to rent it for three days, it would cost a fortune. It only includes 200 miles in total. Now, this uh, particular Model Y is more than 100 miles from my house, so I could drive it most of the way home and most of the way back over three days. <sighs> That's not going to help me figure it out, unfortunately. So, is it too small? I don't know. The answer is unknown and kind of unknowable without getting in the car. So, maybe if you have one, and live in the Northwest, or will be visiting the Northwest, I would love to see it. If you know someone who could help me out, that would be awesome too. Because if it doesn't fit, we already know the answer, and if it does, the decision gets, it gets a bit harder. The second problem is that it is expensive. 60 grand is a lot of money. The federal incentives are all gone. There are state incentives in Washington, uh, but they do not apply to purchases over 45000 which this would be. So there are no incentives. And uh, in terms of expensive, I would have to put in charging. Now, I know it's not super difficult, and I could probably get by with trickle charging for a while. You see, my brother is an electrician and he has declined to charge me full freight for work and also declined to get out here in a reasonable time frame. Uh, we're coming up on two years, and I was always planning to have him put in a car charger. I just didn't realize I would need it before he could actually get here, which I may. And if I buy it, and it takes a million years to get here, it may still not be ready. But in either case, there is an expense. Even just paying for a bit of his time and the equipment and the materials, it's, it, it costs money. And he would be bringing a helper who I would be paying because you need a helper anyway. So some of the considerations I've seen people share with me, which are all fair, uh, it's got great resale value. It holds its resale value really well. And this was true before the supply constraints of the pandemic. It's more true now but in ways that are less likely to be sustained. But resale value only helps when you sell the car. I don't plan to sell. I plan to drive. I plan to own. Resale value doesn't help me a whole lot. Well, you could say five grand a year in gas. Well, I don't know how much you drive, but I don't spend 5000 a year on gas or maintenance or repairs. I don't have that. I don't drive that many miles, so I don't have as large of an opportunity for savings. I do have very cheap electricity at home, seven, eight cents a kilowatt hour. But again, it's kind of tough when you don't go anywhere to actually save some money. They say, well, you could, you could write it off on your taxes. And that is true, but that's already true of my current vehicle. So apart from the initial depreciation on a new vehicle, it's not a big difference. Well, Brian, your income from your channel will go up before August or December or whenever one comes available. Uh, maybe. Maybe. I'm not sure I'm comfortable making a non-refundable deposit kind of gamble 
on that happening, only to break my own heart. Uh, maybe it'll go up, maybe it won't. YouTube is a real tough racket. So I don't know if that's necessarily true. Well, uh, Brian, you could rent it out on Turo. Maybe. I live in between two major cities. I don't know if there's a market for a rental Tesla here. I would certainly put it on Turo, but I'm not certain it would work. I'm not certain there's anyone here who would actually need it. But it would only take a few days to cover the payment, so that'd be, I guess, great. Well, Brian, you could take a longer loan. Yes, yes, I could. I mean, my car will be paid off like in a year or two. Um, and, boy, I tell you, taking a car loan that won't be paid off until my mid-50s is a little daunting. Other people have said, well, take a, take a home equity loan to pay for it. I am not comfortable doing that. I am not comfortable doing that. But with all that said, there could still be ways to make it work. So I want to share them with you, and you can give me your feedback and let me know where I'm crazy and where I'm wrong and where I'm right. So, taking the longer loan, the car is going to last. I am convinced of that. So that would take a payment of like 1100 ish down to like 650 ish That's more doable. Uh, the tax savings, I already got that. Well, uh, I, could, I, could, I could make videos about it. I feel like there's already a lot of those, and I don't know what new perspective I could bring that would, that, would, that would make me any money from that. So I don't think that's it. So really the considerations are a longer loan and Turo. And I'm open to both of those, but it's still pretty intimidating. So here's how you guys can help. Give me your thoughts and wisdom. Tell me what I'm missing or misunderstanding. Uh, especially as it pertains to Washington State. And if you have or know of a seven-seat Model Y I could check out, let me do that. Let me know. Get me connected. Because I just got to see one to know. And, yeah, that's kind of it. I don't know, man. That's kind of it. So what did I miss or misunderstand? Leave me all your thoughts, your wisdom, your blind and brilliance. Enter them in the comments below. And as always, my friends, stay tuned and stay juicy. And remember that I simply cannot wait to hear from you clever robots in the future. And yeah, I know, the Cybertruck holds six, but getting one is probably going to take five years. I could just order that, uh, but that wouldn't really help me get a Tesla as much as think I'm going to get a Tesla. I would rather have a Cybertruck than a Model Y. I know we would fit in there, but uh, I think the wait list is just too long. Quick thanks to my Patreons, as always, who get uh, early access, an ad-free experience, bonus content, and help keep this channel running for as little as a buck a month. Thank you guys for that.